So today we are going to talk about uh, analysis of coherence, um, and then I think we should have some time. So um, I'll start uh, exploratory factor analysis, but not using M plus. Um, I think we'll do M plus next class, which I think should be Saturday. Um, so today I'm gonna. Uh, do uh, exploratory factor analysis in SPSS, but also um, I'll introduce some syntax uh, like map test and parallel analysis, which you need to use syntax. So let's first uh, um, talk about analysis of coherence. So the reason for us to use analysis covariance is that we want to introduce a covariant or several covariants to control the potential effects of some variables. Um, that's why when we are using uh, analysis of covariance, we are saying we want to uh, evaluate uh, the population means uh, here Population means are uh, maybe cell means or marginal means. Um, if we are saying cell means, maybe we are uh, comparing uh, uh, complex mean comparisons like test interaction effect. Uh, but also, if we want to uh, compare cell means, maybe uh, we are doing a pairwise comparison. And also, maybe sometimes we will have more than two factors, then we are comparing population means, uh, which should be marginal means. So here I'm just stating generally, say we are evaluating population means on the dependent variable um, to see whether they are the same across different levels of a factor or uh, several factors controlling for the effects of a covariant. So that's uh, uh, main reason for us to use covert. We want to control the effects of covert on the dependent variable. Uh, that's ANCOVA. Um, typically, when we are having a pre-post design, um, we many times introduce pretest as a covert. This is quite common in experimental design. Um, for me, uh, that's a time when I use analysis of covariance for the most of the time. Uh, but also, if you remember, when you have a pre-post design, you can do gain score or different score by uh, by subtracting the pretest score from post-test uh, to get a gain score, um, which we had an example in previous class, right? Um, and also. In other times when we have demogra demographic variables that may influence the dependent variable, um, we want to introduce these variables as a covariant to control for the effects. Uh, this is, I think, the circumstances that I can come up uh, that are some common covariants. Um, if you can come up with some other examples, uh, we can add more. But I want to um, reiterate one thing is that um, when we are considering a covariant or several covariants, we really need to con uh, con consider the literature. I know uh, some publications will have some statistical analysis, say there are some differences on the covariance, so that's why we introduce that variable as a covariant. Or there are some statistical techniques to support us using that variable or those variables as covariants. Um, but uh, uh, I here, I really want you to uh, take into account the uh, literature when you are considering having a covariant or covariants. Um, that is not a decision made made based on statistical analysis. But I really want you to think about some theories or literature that can help you to decide whether you need a covert or not. Um, 
So the advantage of having a covert is say, when you introduce your covert, then you are kind of uh, partially out the variance from the error, from the denominator. So ideally, if you having a covert or zero covert, then the error term from the F equation, so that's basically from the denominator will be smaller. So if the denominator is smaller, then you'll have larger F values. That is to say, you'll have more chances to see significant results. That's the uh, advantage of having a covert or zero covariance. You kind of have the error, partition the variance uh, from the error term by introducing the uh, covert. Um, but this is ideally uh, what happened. Uh, sometimes if you have a poor reliability of your measures, sometimes we'll find that after introducing a covariant, you still have a quite large error term, still non-significant results. That may be due to your uh, poor design of the items, your measurement issue, um, maybe large measurement error, something like that. So that's why I said ideally, if you have covariant, then it can help you reduce the error term from the denominator. Okay. Um, there are some statistical assumptions related to analysis of covariants, and uh, uh, I don't think in this class we have talked about assumptions yet, uh, but uh, I think you should know there are assumptions when you're conducting statistical analysis. For example, if you do t-test, then there are some assumptions you should uh, uh, make. For example, normality. Uh, sometimes if you do independent sample t-test, you assume uh, homogeneity of variance. Independence, you have you randomly assign each individual into conditions, so they are independent. So these are the uh, assumptions not just uh, uh, for ANCOVA, but also for other statistical tests. For example, t-test, ANOVA. Um, I think uh, most of the quantitative uh, methods require the normality assumption. Um, and uh, for I think most of the uh, statistical analysis require uh, independence, which is say each individual should be independent from each other. But uh, uh, today I want to talk about the uh, one assumption which many times people tend to ignore, which is called the homogeneity of slopes assumption. So what's that? Um, it's similar to homogeneity of variance assumption in t-tests, but actually it's related to slopes. So where comes the slopes? So if we look at this, uh, graph say remember we have a dependent variable and we may have one or more independent variable and also in analysis of covariants we have covariant one covariant or zero covariants let's assume we have only one covariant so there should be a linear relationship between the covariant and dependent variable so that's why you see from this graph there, there are three lines here. The slope of this line reflects the relationship, actually it's a re linear relationship between the covariant and the dependent variable. So the homogeneity of slope assumption say, um, so you see there are three different lines. Actually these three different, different lines are three levels of the independent variables. This is just a simple example. So you can assume if you have a independent variable with several levels, maybe so two treatment groups and one control groups, then you have three levels, three conditions. So that's the say the homogeneity of slopes assumption say so this slope, so the a slope between the covariant and dependent variable is the same across all of these groups created by these independent variables. So if we look at this statement, it says in the population, the covariant is linearly related to the dependent variable within all levels of the factor and the slopes relating to the 
relating the covariant to the dependent variable are equal across all levels of the factor. That's the homogeneity of slopes assumption. Um, so let's look at the uh, graph again. So that is to say, these slopes are the same in different groups, and these groups are actually created by uh, your independent variables, your manipulation. And uh, um, I want to um, reiterate one thing here is, in the population, when we are saying statistical assumptions, um, we are talking about the things happening in the population. For example, uh, when we are saying normality, we are saying the dependent variable is normally distributed in the population, not in the sample. And also, here the same, homogeneity of slopes assumption said in the population, these slopes are the same. So that's the uh, assumption for the ANCOVA, which is quite unique. Because in analysis of variance, you don't have a covariance, so you don't have a you don't have such slopes. So for this assumption, actually, you need to test test that before you conducting uh, actual analysis of covariance. Um, so because we assume that uh, at each value of the covariant, these differences are the same. So these these lines are parallel. So when the covariant is at this value, these differences and the, when the covariant is at this value, these are the differences. These differences are the same because these lines are parallel. That is to say, these slopes are, are the same. Um, we actually need to test this assumption uh, statistically before we run in the uncover. And many people, um, I think many, many people uh, ignore that, maybe, or forget about it. Um, so that's why I want to mention that. Um, so actually I have an example here. A very simple example. Um, there are three experimental conditions. Placebo, low dose vitamin C, high dose vitamin C, and then there are two variables. One is a dependent variable, the number of days with cold symptoms um, during the intervention. And then there is also a kind of pretest the number of days with cold symptoms in the first year before treatment. So we have a, I think we have three variables. The data is actually on the website. Um, So actually, we can statistically test the homogeneity of slope assumption before we conduct analysis of covariance. And we can actually do that. So here, this is independent variable. This is the uh, kind of pretest, post-test. Um, so let's do ANCOVA. Uh, independent variable as a fixed factor, and then this is uh, days of code, post days, so that's a post test, and then pre test as a covariant. Um, I say usually our covariants are continuous variables. I say usually our covariants are continuous variables in the ANCOVA context. Um, when you have Categorical variables, sometimes you can do regression analysis. Um, I think in other courses, I, I think I covered some of the topics. When you have regression analysis, you can also do main facts interaction, simple main facts analysis. Um, uh, so usually I will request a pairwise comparison. Usually I do LSD, um, descriptive statistics. Eta square. Um, 
So remember, before you testing the um, the un un analysis of covariance, we need to test the homogeneity of slope assumption. Actually, we can uh, do like this uh, model. You can click model here, and then we do custom customized model. Uh, there is so it should be group pre days, and then. The most important is that you create an interaction between independent variable and covariate. So by looking at this interaction, the interaction between the independent variable and covariate on the dependent variable, we can actually uh, statistically test the homogeneity of slope assumption. And I think that's we, uh, we, should, we should be good. Oh, by the way, uh, I realized I, I don't think I am doing a good job doing the graph. So if you really want to do graph, so uh, I can show you how to do some graph. Um, I'm not very good at doing graph because sometimes I don't think there is a need for me to do graph. Um, in my writing, sometimes I just write, and uh, if I feel it's sufficient for the writing, then I don't do graph. And then, for me, if I want to present my research in a conference, then sometimes I feel, uh, for example, at AERA, American Educational Research Association, uh, sometimes I feel people don't care or don't like reading statistics. So when I'm presenting, sometimes I'll just put a conclusion. That's why um, I'm not using graph very often. Um, you can consider this is my limitation. Um, this is just my style. So in order to create a graph here, we can do a scatter plot to create a graph similar like uh, this one. This is the uh, ideal situation in the population, but we actually can create a, some kind of graph like that in the sample. Um, so we can do scatter plot. Scatter plot, uh, sim simple scatter, define, and then we can. So usually x axis and y axis don't matter, uh, but uh, conventionally we put a, uh, we put a pre test on the x axis and post it on the y-axis, I say conventionally, but usually it doesn't matter. Um, and then you put the independent variable as a marker, and then you can create the, uh, the plot. And then you have the plot, and the, now you also need to modify the plot a little bit. Um, if you're looking at this plot, there is no, no line here. Um, so. If you want to tell people there are, these dots actually include three groups, three experimental groups, then it's hard to tell. So usually we'll add some subgroup lines to fit to the data. Um, I'm not sure if you guys can have that because I'm using SPSS 20. Sometimes I, I think... Um, I think for other versions of SPSS, maybe it's a little bit different. Um, but that's the way I created this graph. Um, so by, by having these lines, you can clearly see in the sample if there are any difference or not between these three groups. Uh, you, you can further modify the graph if you want. Um, for example, you can change the color, the shape of these dots, or the uh, color or shape of these lines, so that they can be distinguishable in um, black and white print. In case sometimes when we print, uh, there is no color print, so you need to modify the graph further. Uh, okay. Uh, that's a graph. 